So in this lab we'll look at uh, IP addresses and MAC addresses with inside Windows and, and Linux. Remember the IP address will not change normally as we move through the, the public internet uh, but the MAC address will change as we go through from link to link. So what we'll do is we'll use our our VM. So we have a Windows VM here and a Ubuntu VM and we'll have a look at the how we set up the network addresses for these. So with inside VMware we use control alt insert to be able to do a control alt delete and log in. So let's log in here. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is to be able to look at the network adapter using the command line. So we'll just do that. And what we'll do is we'll just increase the size of the font and there it is there. So ipconfig uh, will allow us to, be, to determine with Windows what our network adapters are. So there's the name, the name of the network adapter, in this case Ethernet. Here's the IP address, here's the subnet mask. The subnet mask, the 255s identify a network part and the last part identifies a host part on that network. So computers which are local to this network will be able to communicate with each other. If they're not, then we need a router in between. And this is the default gateway. When we want to send things to the internet, this is where the data packets will actually be sent to. For the second part, we'll have a look at the MAC address of the adapters. So in this case, the MAC address of our network adapter is this. So let's copy that and we'll just any, any MAC address lookup method would be fine. So we'll go to Wireshark and then what we can do is we can type in our MAC address. So we have a MAC address is 48 bits and each one of these is 4 bits. So we have 12 characters. First six characters identifies the manufacturer. So in this case it's VMware. And the thing with this is that we're using a virtual environment. So this is a virtual adapter. So it's, it's registered to v VMware. If we looked at this adapter on our physical machine here, let's look at the wireless adapter that we're using just now. And we can see the wireless adapter has a MAC address which is here. So C8 F733. C8 F733. And in this case it's Intel is the manufacturer which is what we would expect because it's an Intel, Intel chipset that we're actually using. Okay. So for the next part, uh, we'll actually have a look at the settings for the network card. Okay, so we'll have a look at network connections. And here we are here. We can enable and disable it at any time. But we'll have a look at the properties. TCP IP and here we go so just now it's it's DCP so in this case VMware will allocate it an address so let's now get this set up with a different IP address and see if it still communicates so just now uh, this is what our address is that's allocating it statically so we'll just put it here at dot two hundred forty seven and we keep the same gateway which is dot two and we keep the same for our DCP for DNS okay we just have to be very careful that we get the default gateway correctly and it's on the same sub-network. 
so here we are so we now have a new IP address and a new default gateway so hopefully we should still be working uh, let's go to cisco.com and everything's fine there we're communicating so that address is, is fine so what we'll do next is we'll allocate it an address which is not on the local network so we'll allocate it with this address struggling to find our home site so obviously it's, it's not working anymore okay so that shows if we're not on the same network then we can't communicate so what we'll do is we'll change it back to DHCP DHCP will give us an IP address subnet mask default gateway and DNS server so we can see it's acquiring an address and there we go it's actually allocated it back again as to the address that we had before so now we'll look at how we set up and discover the IP address in uh, Linux. So what we'll do is we'll just pull up another a terminal and the command we use to determine the IP address is ifconfig. So there's the IP address, there's the subnet mask, there is the MAC address, And we're using Ethernet 3 as the interface allocation ID. And then to, to determine the actual default route or the gateway, we can see that the default here for all data packets is to be sent here. So it's the same as it is on the other the other machine, the Windows machine 47.2. So in this case if we look at the, the MAC address, so the MAC address here is our our MAC address here. So let's use the same tool as we used in Windows. Okay, so we'll probably find a very similar result because we're using a VMware ad adapter. Okay, so the observation here is we're in a virtual environment and we're actually uh, able to uh, use the, the VM, uh, VMware generated uh, MAC address. Okay. So the next thing we'll do is we'll have a look at Dennis Lookup. So with NS lookup, we can determine the MAC address, the IP address, the main IP address, 
for uh, a domain. So we'll do the same for intel.com. And for ibm.com. Finally, for bbc.co.uk. And then what we can do is we can use the same command in Windows to determine the IP addresses. Okay, so we've determined the main IP addresses for each of the each of the main sites that we looked at. If we want, we can actually try uh, those with inside a web browser, and you can see it's actually resolving back to BBC. Now, what we'll do is we'll examine the the DNS entries in more detail. So we use NS Lookup. And we're going to actually set the SOA type So this gives us the SOA record for Cisco.com. So you can see here the primary name server is ns1.cisco.com. So that should be the server which actually uh, keeps uh, the record for the whole of the Cisco.com domain. And then the secondary one is actually here. The serial number for the record and it's important that the serial number is set. Whenever the serial number is changed, then it will cause other DNS servers to update the records. This is the serial number. The refresh time is two hours. The retry time is every 30 minutes. And then the expire time is 10 days. Default TTL. Time to live is one day. And these are the, the main name servers here. Next what we'll do is we'll have a look at the the record for the mail servers. MX record. And we'll look at Cisco.com. Okay, so here are the main mail servers. The lower the, the value, the higher the precedence for the, the mail server. So we have four in here for the mail servers. And we can actually determine the IP addresses of each of these mail servers here. The main security risk for uh, these types of records is that an intruder could take over a domain by modifying the main SOA and NMX records. 